Just before we came on, uh, the three guys were talking about like how my music synergizes with whatever the um, with whatever we're doing in Arc for whatever expansion or, or the TV show. Or, and, and the reason for the synergy is is because I feel like when I start writing, I kind of know what we're doing. Whereas if you come on at the end, it's like you have to learn everything so quickly. Um, and this happens in games, but in film, another good example, I don't know if you've seen Dune, um, but everyone's kind of raving about the soundtrack for Dune, and, well, do you know why? It's because Hans Zimmer was involved for, like, two or three years, and that's a long time to, like, be with something, and I think you generally write better music when you're attached to something for a long time, and that's why it's really cool to be still be doing art, because I've seen it from the beginning, I created the the musical IP with you in 2015 to see it come all the way where it has through Genesis 2 and now the really cool part for me with the TV show is diving in to the old stuff and being able to rework it and bring it back into a different format um, because some of those themes are actually quite underdeveloped. Um, and it's like, oh, we can kind of give them a new lease of life uh, if the story in the TV show allows. One of the unique things about Ark's music, is, especially in the TV show, is that it's quite bold. I mean, I think the game's music is pretty bold too. Um, but often the trend in TV is to have music, like really sit in the background and kind of not do anything. And in my opinion, when music's not doing anything, it shouldn't be there at all. So there's no point in music just being wallpaper. That's just kind of a waste of everybody's time. Um, so if you're going to have music, it should actually mean something. Um, and because of the way Ark is with its storytelling, it's, it's, you know, like I said, it's quite bold. It kind of allows me to do things with the music that I, I hadn't really imagined we might be able to do in the TV show. Um, but it has, it's, it's both challenging, uh, but also a little intimidating because um, I've got to, you know, there's, there's a lot of storytelling weight put on the, on the music. On the other hand, when it hits right, uh, it really does hit right in a very powerful way. I think, I think the, um, I think Ark players kind of got a glimpse of that with the end of Genesis 2, because I think that's like some of the strongest storytelling that we've um, that we've done in Ark so far. Because um, it's most people will just think about the cutscene, but it's actually everything leading up to the cutscene and the and the the fight with Rockwell beforehand and even the pre just the, the pre-fight music, like all of that is actually designed musically to kind of be continuous one after the other. Um, so you get, you know, it's a quiet beginning and then it obviously swells for the Rockwell fight. And then the final cutscene has a lot of ebb and flow to it as well. And it's that ebb and flow that makes you feel something. When everything's loud all the time, your brain just switches off. People who have played Ark are probably familiar with my work. I'm pretty pretty good at reusing the themes and 
painting them in a different light. That's kind of like one of my favorite things to do. I do it in Ori as well. Um, like it's, it's frankly, it's composition 101, taking a theme and being able to vary it in lots of different ways. Um, but with all of the different characters in the TV show, we've got so many starting points with the themes and then we can vary them as the character develops throughout the show. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of music and it's it's the, the workload is is kind of doubled in a sense because um, we're recording everything live with an orchestra with the same orchestra that we uh, recorded uh, Genesis 2 and the um, the original soundtrack for for the game. So that's like a lot of work, but it means that the uh, recording quality and the production quality will be absolutely top notch. A lot of people don't know that most soundtracks, including ARC, the orchestral musicians have never seen the music before the day they come in to record it. So, for example, um, the most probably the most challenging track on um, Gen, Gen 2 is Rockwell's Garden 1. It has this really, really, really fast uh, like string line uh, uh, for most of the track. Um, and that is take three. Um, so take one was like, yeah, it's pretty good. Take two was, yeah, it's even better. And then take three was like the one. And I was like, okay, we're done. Um, so yeah, basically we spent about nine to 10 minutes with the track and I was like, yep, we're done. Let's move to the, move to the next one. Um, but yeah, Amazing. most soundtracks, the musicians have not seen the music before. It's a very unique skill to be able to sight read and then also get the emotion uh, right. And that's why there's very few orchestras in the world that can do it. The fun part of the, the TV show is, is really, it's, it's scoring one episode at a time is cool, but actually the real payoff is when, and I'm still working on it obviously, but I can see the real fun for me is knowing the ending and being able to work towards that. Um, and that's, I, I love writing music, but what I love more is telling a story with music and being able to make people feel something when they're watching or playing. And when you have the chance to craft something from episode one to the end, um, that's that's much more rewarding and satisfying as a composer. The, the arc two theme was quite a departure from especially what I was starting to think about, because I was starting to think about Gen 2 as well. Um, and, uh, you know, they're obviously two very, very different things. But the the word that kept um, the word that kept coming up was that it had to be pretty primal and bold um, and uh, also no synths. Um, that was a pretty explicit instruction. So it's like literally the opposite of Genesis 2, which is like packed with synths. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was like kind of a unique, uh, a unique challenge. And I, I think one of the other things that was important is like we've rearranged the main OG arc theme so many times, and we need to do something like completely brand new. Now that does what what I think is interesting though is it doesn't mean like necessarily that we're completely abandoning the OG theme but one of one of the great things about the original theme is that it's so recognizable that we can drop it in the second game if we need to and it'll really hit home but also making a clean break to arc 2 allows us to establish something new and build on it um, over the coming years as uh, as we put together uh, as we put together the sequel um, I mean one of the on a musical side, one of my favorite things about the Arc 2 theme is we had a, it's the, I think it's the, it actually is the biggest brass section that I've ever booked for a recording, um, even bigger than Arc 1. That. Um, so, standard orchestra has usually three trumpets, four horns, 
uh, three trombones and a tuba. It's like 11 players. Uh, we had 24 brass players for uh, Arc 2's theme. Um, so we had four trumpets, uh, eight horns, eight trombones, and then um, two cymbassos, which if you don't know what they are, they're just kind of like these gnarly looking uh, trombones and two tubers. Um, and it just created this like massive wall of sound um, that sounded like it had that primal feature to it that I felt represented um, Santiago well and also kind of the, the chaos of that trailer as well because um, there's, a, there's a lot going on in that trailer uh, in that four and a half minutes um, but uh, I think one of the uh, other interesting things that came out of that trailer though um, and people can read into this what they whatever they want um, the ending with like the holographic sequence um, you know near the end you can hear echoes of Journey's End in there. Having written all of the music for Ark over the last last six years, it's kind of like a, there is a massive grab bag of stuff now to be able to kind of work into Ark 2 and the TV show. And um, it's quite a responsibility because I'm like handling the, the, the game and the TV show at the same time. But also because I wrote every note, um, I think I'm uniquely positioned to give you the best possible soundtrack for both the TV show and the game and make sure that it all sounds consistent. The um, King Titan is is a popular one. Uh, I think it's fairly obvious why. It's just very massive sounding. Um, Aberration's theme was, um, was I think, number one. Um, and yeah, Aberration's theme is another one I don't even really remember writing. I was just like, kind of just like locked in. Um, but I think, I think I enjoyed doing Aberration's theme because it was the first time we were kind of like starting to go all in on the sci-fi element. We were kind of hinting at it with Overseer and the tech stuff at the end of the, the core game. Um, but with Aberration, we were kind of like truly starting to get to get in there um, with the, the tech and sci-fi thing. And so I think the Aberration theme is the first time I truly permitted to doing like the, the arc sci-fi sound. And I think maybe the community likes it the most because it's the first time they heard that kind of arc music. <laughs> Usually my favorite music is the most recent music. Um, like when I hear the old stuff, all I hear is mistakes. I usually hate listening to my music after I finished it because I, I think you're very similar with that. Like you're, when you finish something, all you see is the mistakes, right? The event music is really fun because I just get to do weird stuff with the box, with Ark's theme. Uh, I mean, Love Evolved was hilarious for me to do. I never thought in a million years I'd get to use a saxophone for, for, the, for the Ark theme. Um, obviously, Fear Evolved is by far the most popular. Um, that's that's something that's, that I think will be an arc forever. Um, I'd, I'd almost be scared to do a version two of Fear Evolved because it's like, why mess with it? Um, One of my favorites. It's like right, every exactly. time we do a new Fear Evolved trailer, I'm like, yes, here comes right. the music. <laughs> um, and I think the most recent one I did was uh, was the Summer Bash, which was the the uh, the mock eighties eighties um, pop thing. Because which was, with which my was ro ro romantic, right? Hair. Exactly, <laughs> like that and the uh, and the the Valentines, you know, the real throwback. Oh, yeah, the, yes, exactly. Um, but yeah, the yeah the um, the community does like the uh, the OG uh, Island uh, battle music as well, uh, and you know I I I. I I saw someone ask in, in the chat, you know, is, is the OG 
uh, you know, island music going to make it into the into the animated series. And I'll I'll just say that OG music is present in some way in the animated series. I don't think that's a huge spoiler that I'm going to get punished for. So uh, what the art? I think the art <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so. Uh, there's been that there's been that poll recently with the the top ten arc soundtracks, and I was actually like pleasantly surprised. I don't know why I should say pleasantly surprised, but the community actually has pretty good taste. Um, so, um, like, I felt like the, my my only quibble was that Journey's End wasn't high enough. Um, but like a lot of the tracks that they'd highlighted were actually like some of my favorites too. Um, I think one that particularly stands out for me, because um, it was quite early on in the process, was Overseer. I think that'll always be a landmark track just because of how mad it is. Um, yeah. And if honestly, if you asked me, like, how did I write it? I honestly couldn't tell you because I, I, I remember that was just like a blur for like a day. But I wrote most of it in a day, but I was like super focused and locked in in the zone. And I was like, yeah, I think that's done. And I sent it off and you, everyone was like, wow, this is nuts, great. Um, and then we went off and recorded it and it, um, and it, was, and it was done. When, well, my point is, is like when I when I feel something, it's it's usually very promising, and I felt it, you know, at certain points with the the arc tracks over the years, um, and seeing these episodes come to life and being able to get an emotional response from them. Uh, if I'm feeling something, I'm usually pretty confident that the audience will feel something too. I always hear from from fans of arcs like, when are we going to get ambient music? Because because some people like playing the game with no music, and some people are like, I want music when we're walking around. And and it was funny when I, when I first started working on the the TV show, I was like, wow, we don't really have much quiet music in in arc, and so that's kind of like being a new thing for the TV show, which has been really exciting to explore. Um, so the orchestra for the, the TV show is more well-rounded to be able to play the action stuff, but also the the more emotional stuff. Like I'm slow to start on a project because I need to like learn and feel the project, whether it's a game or a TV show. But once it's all in here, by the time we get to the end, I'm insanely fast. Um, I think I, th I don't think even you guys know how quickly I wrote like the ending of Genesis 2. Um, partly because we were under time pressure, but like. Um, but, but the thing is, because I kind of knew what we were going to do, it, I actually found it, I don't want to say easy, but like I just kind of had it mapped out in my head. So one, once I know uh, the game or the, the TV show intimately, it's I find it much easier to write. So I'm finding as I write more and more music for the TV show, it's getting quicker and quicker and quicker because it's like learning a language. At the beginning, you're kind of like lacking in confidence when you're when you make your first attempts to speak in a new language but after like after a while you get more confident and then it just starts to flow freely um, and that's it's similar for me when doing a soundtrack my focus is always on the player or the viewer and how they're going to feel and so i'm trying to find the music that will best represent that so that process for me is the same whether it's ori or arc. Now the part where it's different is obviously I'm using completely different instruments for Ori and completely different instruments for Arc. That there'd, there'd never be a reason where we have that massive brass section, for example, in Ori. It would just be completely unnecessary. And to flip that on its head, if we had the smaller orchestra in Ori try to do what we're doing in Arc, it wouldn't work. Um, so that in that respect, the instrumentation side of things it's different. The melodies are obviously different, but the process for like finding the right emotion, that's the same. I think that was a pretty good answer. But there's this weird stigma that game composers can't really do film or TV, which is complete nonsense. Um, um, but uh, yeah, um, quite a lot of games that have been turned into TV shows don't have the original game composers, which I think is a, a real shame because um, they, they kind of lose the opportunity to have that convergence that we have 
on Arc. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, really glad that it worked out for, for this.